welcome to Behind the Ticker. I'm Brad Roth, Chief Investment Officer of Thor Financial Technologies and Portfolio Manager of THLV, the Thor Low Volatility ETF. Behind the Ticker uncovers the inner workings of the ETF industry. We will interview portfolio managers and ETF service providers to dive deep into their work lives and their businesses. We will learn the inner workings of their strategies and what drives them as they continue to grow their company. Many of these individuals are entrepreneurs and will have unique and compelling insights to share as much goes on behind the ticker. Please note, nothing in this show is investment advice, and it is meant solely for educational and entertainment purposes only. Welcome to Behind the Ticker. Today we have on Matt Kaufman from Calamos, and we're here to talk about their newest issue, which just launched on May 1st, 2024, ticker CPSM, the Calamos S&P 500 Structured Alt Protection ETF. This is a very interesting and I think high demand product. It's got S&P 500 on this particular cap at 9.81% to the upside, while offering zero downside participation. This is one of 12 issues that are going to be coming out from Calamos over the next year. I think there's going to be an extreme high demand for this product. It is very interesting with how it's structured. It's actually very simple. And Matt does a great job explaining the product, how it works, why it works, and where you should be putting it in your portfolio. So without further ado, please enjoy this conversation with Mr. Matt Kaufman. Hey, Matt, welcome to the show. Brad, thanks for having me. So before we get started, uh, can you give everybody a bit of your background and how you eventually ended up at, in your position over at Calamos? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, and I think part of that story probably leads into the, the products that we're launching here as well. Um, I've been in the ETF space uh, a little over 20 years. Uh, started off at PowerShares uh, in the early days, building out the smart beta ETF space. Um, you had the, the privilege and honor of working under uh, Bruce Bond there and learned a lot from him and uh, you know, saw you know, how innovation can change the ETF landscape until, uh, I'd say until PowerShares, a lot of the products were all you know, very passive, index-based, market cap weighted. And so we really you know, brought, a lot, brought on a lot of uh, smart beta type products. We did you know, FTSE Rafi and worked with research affiliates. We did commodity type products. And so you know, really pushed the envelope of what could be done in the ETF wrapper. So really appreciative, appreciative of uh, that time um, at PowerShares. After PowerShares sold to Invesco, I uh, went to an actuarial consulting firm, um, which makes probably absolutely no sense. <laughs> and uh, so I was at Milliman uh, Financial Risk Management. That was around 2010. Um, they wanted to build funds out of the hedging strategies that they were running on the balance sheets of life insurance companies. It was a fantastic opportunity looking back um, learned a tremendous amount about the insurance world, um, about hedging strategies, what works, what you know maybe doesn't work, and uh, what we saw there was was you know largely rate driven. You know a lot of insurance products are rate driven, and so um, you know after the financial crisis, rates were extremely low, and it was very difficult to you know, from an investor's perspective, it was difficult to provide or get risk management or income from bonds. And so people were looking toward the equity markets to do that. You know, they were running equity risk management strategies, um, covered call strategies to generate income. Like people were looking at the equity markets to generate risk management and income. And that, that worked very well. You know, we had uh, built around 50, 55 funds, uh, largely for life insurance companies, um, variable annuity sub accounts, uh, raised a significant amount of assets there. Um, the other thing that we noticed is, you know, it was difficult for life insurance companies to deliver meaningful upside on their fixed indexed annuities, which, you know, for an ETF user may not be familiar with that marketplace, but that delivers, you know, equity linked upside with no downside risk. So principal protection over um, you know, an outcome period, uh, those FIAs might be one year, three years, five years. Um, and so just some background there. But it was difficult to give anybody, anyone meaningful upside on those types of products. Uh, and so the insurance space and the structured product space really, too, started moving toward, you know, what, what we would call this risk sharing model, 
where you could deliver something less than principal protection. You could deliver partial principal protection um, where you would d- deliver 10 percent you know, buffer or 20 percent buffer. Um, and so that would allow you to deliver you know, meaningful upside again. Um, and so that we saw that space start to really take off the structured annuity market, the buffered structured note space. Um, and by 2016, I would say, you know, we were still at Milliman and we noticed that you could deliver that type of outcome very efficiently with options contracts. Like we could just take flex options, you know, equity listed flex options on broad liquid markets, package those together, make them all expire at the same time, customize the strike prices. And then you could deliver that as an outcome uh, via a package of options. And so because you can do it with options, those are securities. And so those securities can now sit inside of a wrapper like an exchange traded fund. Um, So I don't know too many folks who spent time in the ETF space and then also fortunate enough to be in the insurance space. But being able to merge those two worlds and think through the theory and the math and the construct of outcomes delivered by, you know, balance sheet based products like insurance products or structured notes, and then doing that inside of the tax efficient liquid, you know, low cost wrapper. So the, uh, you know, backstory, the the head trader um, at Milliman and, and I and a few other folks worked together to build this intellectual property and then um, delivered that into innovator uh, ETFs. Um, you know, Bruce is coming back into the ETF space um, they hired Milliman as the sub advisor for those products, so they were uh, still a client of uh, of Milliman. That business is growing strong, and it you know, really set the stage for um, the buffered ETF space. So, you know, obviously, we need to, to give uh, Innovator credit for building those that you know, product set out, that ETF space out, that product set's going really strong. It's about fifty billion dollars across them, and you know, other uh, other competitors as well. Um, what we saw, you know, I've, I've been at uh, Calmos about a year and a half and, you know, what we've been watching, um, is the rate environment. And so as rates have come up, you know, off of zero, say call it the, the lift of, you know, March, 2022, um, as rates are approaching, you know, two, 3%, you know, we're looking at that rate environment and watching flows in other spaces. And like, guess what? People are buying CDs again. They're buying money markets again. Um, and the same was true in the structured note and the um, you know annuity world. People were buying capital protected structured notes. They were buying fixed index annuities again. And that space, the capital protected space, we would call it outside of the ETF world, is about four times the size of the buffered space. And so it's a massive industry that has really not been disrupted by the ETF vehicle. And so that's what we're doing at Calamos. We're taking this brand, I call it brand new to the ETF space, but it really couldn't have been developed when rates were, you know, below one, two percent. But now that we're north of that, you know, we're at you know five a little over five percent now, we can deliver capital protection inside of an ETF wrapper. And so that's what we've launched today. You know, we're filming this uh you know May first. We launched about an hour, two hours ago, hour and a half ago. Um, and you know the market is accepting this type of strategy. So CPSM is the ticker symbol for the first of twelve ETFs that we're launching. So we have an ETF today that's CPSM that delivers one hundred percent downside protection with upside exposure relative to the S and P five hundred. So there's capped upside here. You know there's no free lunch, um, but the upside is capped. But because rates are at a point where they're higher than they used to be. Um, we can the cap that we struck uh, yesterday was 9.81%. So now investors can have a choice. If you think about like what your choices are between a CD or between this, you know, you could choose your, you know, guaranteed 5% uh, CD rate that you would get, hold it for a year, and that would expire in a year and then you would pay ordinary income tax on that, which if you're in the highest tax bracket that turns into 3.2, 3.3%. Um or you can turn in that guaranteed 3.2, 3.3% and get the chance to earn your upside of the market. So you get the you can link your cash essentially to the equity markets, get upwards of 9.8%, and then have no greater downside risk over that one year outcome period. So again, it's for folks who want to buy in at the beginning, hold till the end, they get that outcome period performance. 
but there's also you know opportunities to buy in along the way. So like right now the market's been open for an hour or two. The the NAV is still hovering right around twenty five dollars. So people are still buying in. We're seeing really strong volume uh, right out of the gate, uh, which is good good to see. Um, but any time that net asset value crosses back over its starting point along the way is another good entry point because now you can obtain that one hundred percent downside protection over an outcome period with um, you know a shorter time time horizon left. Uh, so I've, I've spoken a lot. I'll stop there, and uh, you know we can just keep keep talking here. Yeah, no, sure, and and thanks for that. That was I took a lot of notes as you were talking because it's it, it's a very interesting product, and I do want to get into it deeper how how it's structured, where people can kind of put this in their portfolio, and I definitely want to talk about buying it in different cycles of where NAV is or over that outcome period. So we're going to get into all that. Before we do though, I always like to ask people, what do you like to do for fun when you're not building ETFs and and Matt out there selling them? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I grew up playing a lot of volleyball. So I, I, I'd say I used to have Monday nights free to play volleyball. And then uh, since we've you know, had a big brood of children, I've turned into the uh, baseball coach and observer. So we've got, we've got a, a high school freshman on the baseball team. So that, that keeps us busy. We're watching him play. And then I'm coaching our uh, eight-year-old son as well. So between all that, um, that is fun. But that I would say that I have abandoned all personal fun efforts. <laughs> oh, I, I get it. And, and the baseball parent, you know, I coach, uh, seven year old girls soccer. So that's go. like a twice a week commitment. It's, it sounds like talking to baseball parents, they're like playing four games a weekend and that's a heavier lift. So your oh, weekends yeah. are gone. Yeah. I, yeah, I love the, uh, I love volleyball matches cause you know, you can get in and out and you know, 40, 45 minutes, you know, a 30 game baseball season that takes a, a long time to get through. <laughs> yeah, sure does. Well, let's, let's talk broadly about Calamos, uh, if we could just for a second, I know we're going to talk about the ETF, but you guys do a lot of other things. Can you just talk about the business as a whole and how you guys are helping clients kind of along the spectrum? Yeah. The way that I, I position Calamos is as one of the world's leading risk managers and alt providers. Uh, we run the second largest liquid alts mutual fund in the country, market neutral income fund. It's been around for a long time, and a lot of advisors use that uh, mutual fund. We're also the largest user of convert convertibles or manager of convertibles in the U.S. Uh, that might be where people have heard of Calamos as our expertise in convertible bonds uh, that really put us on the map. The firm was founded in the late 70s uh, by John Calamos Sr. He's still in the office, great guy, and uh you know, we bounce ideas off of each other still, and um, he's you know he's running the firm strong. We also have a great CEO, and John Kadunis came on I think five six years ago, and is really positioning the firm for the future. I would say uh, we have private credit uh, funds now, interval funds, working on other uh, ideas in that space, and then an ETF land. Um, you know, really. Seeing the uh, SEC, you know, ETF rule come out, seeing the subsequent derivatives rule come out. And so Calamos made a strategic move to go into the active ETF space, uh, which I think was was the right call. Obviously, I'm appreciative of the of the position here as well. Um, I think there's massive amounts of assets that's going to move into active ETFs over, you know, the next decade or so. Um, if you just track you know, assets under management across passive and actively managed flows, or say assets um, across mutual funds and across ETFs, they're pretty evenly split. About $13 trillion is in passive products and about $13 trillion is in actively managed products. And on, on the passive side, that $13 trillion is split pretty evenly between mutual funds and ETFs. The trouble or the opportunity is on the mutual fund side, that active bucket, $13 trillion, is almost exclusively in the mutual fund. And so we see a lot of that uh, you know, having opportunity to move over to the ETF side, gain that tax efficiency, the liquidity. And so that's uh, a goal of Calamos is to be a part of that growth over the next 10 years. Yeah, no, you guys got a lot going on. It's an exciting place to be. But again, we're here to talk about CPSM, which is the Calamos S&P 500 Structured Alt Protection ETF. Again, it launched today. I don't know a ton about it. You gave us the high level of, look, you're going to get right now 
uh, not at at cap, you're going to get about 9.8% of the upside, 0% downside risk uh, in that product. So how is the fund structured uh, from a holdings perspective to accomplish this? Yeah, so this is a package of three options positions. Uh, one way that it, uh, I find it's easier for people to follow along is if we just pretend like you had $100. So uh, Brad, you have $100. Uh, one thing you could do with that $100 is go out and buy the S&P 500 ETF and you put your $100 in, you get shares of the ETF. That would give you full upside exposure, full downside exposure, like pretty, pretty simple. That's you know, how an ETF works. Uh, when you construct a payoff profile or a defined protection or structured protection type product, uh, what we're doing is we're buying an option package instead. So we're taking your $100 and we're buying a zero strike call or a deep in the money call, which is going to be near a zero strike. And so that uh, that option leg is going to be pretty expensive. It's going to cost you around 98 of your $100. And so um, you know, now we've spent $98 and we've essentially replicated our full upside and downside exposure to the market with a one-year expiration. So that's option leg one. That's your exposure layer. The second layer is your protection layer. So we're going to buy an at-the-money put to give you full downside protection. Uh, let's just pretend that that leg costs $5. So now you've spent $103, but you only had $100. So you've, you've busted your budget, you've overspent. And so the way to bring your $103 back to $100 is to sell an out-of-the-money call. So we're going to sell off some of your upside exposure in order to collect or generate a $3 premium payment that will go back into your pocket to bring your $103 back to $100. So we've bought a zero strike call for $98. We bought a put for five and now we were selling an out of the money call for three. So that there's your hundred dollars and the strike price of that out of the money call determines your upside cap. So that price right now is 9.8%, which means over the next 12 months, if you buy in today, you get upside of the S and P 500 to 9.8% with your at the money put. So with 100% downside protection. And then any day after that, you know, anytime the market's open, you're going to know what your NAV price is. You're going to know what your ETF price is. And so because you know that and you know where the S&P 500 is, you'll always have an outcome that you'll be able to buy into. So like tomorrow, let's just pretend like we're a month from now and the S&P 500 has run up, let's say 5%. So the S&P is up 5%. You're not going to be up exactly 5% because there's time value built into those options. You might be up, you know, one or 2%. You've still got 10 months to go. Um, but if you bought in that day, you would have, instead of a 9.8% upside, if the market was up five, let's say your ETF's up 2%. So you would have a 7% cap because you've got a 7% left. And then you would have 2% of downside risk left. Mm -hmm. Or I said another way, you'd have 98% protection, still very strong protection uh, because the ETF price is up uh, 2%. So that might be difficult to follow uh, just on audio, but hopefully everybody's tracking there. Yeah, no, that that's very helpful. And, and you answered my question. So the cap is really a moving target throughout the year and the cap will likely, well, let me ask the question a, a different way before I ask that. So yeah. this product came out 5.1%. So will it reset again 5.1 with a new cap depending on the price of the options? Yes, that's a great question. So the ETF stays open and the options will conclude on April 30th of 2025. And then we'll enter into a new set of options positions where you'll get a fresh 100% protection level, a new upside cap, and a brand new uh, outcome period. But your money will stay in the fund. And that's important because when you think of that relative to our earlier conversation about like CDs or annuities or structured products, those all grow tax deferred, but then you pay ordinary income rates on that money that you are forced to take. The, on the ETF, the money stays inside the fund. So it grows and compounds tax deferred. And then if you've held it for longer than a year, when you go to sell, you're paying long-term capital gains rates. So it's a, it's a, it's a huge tax alpha trade. So in what situation uh, could you 
theoretically get more upside? Is there a way to get more upside than the cap? So let's say if the market went down 5% over the next month, um, right now on 5.1, the cap set at 9.8. So depending on the price of the option, could your upside cap turn into something like 11 or 12%? I think that's feasible. Um, if you compare it to like the buffered space, you know those have partial principal protection. And so you're da- you, you'd see the NAV move further to the downside. And so anytime the NAV goes below your starting point, your upside cap is going to increase because you just have further to appreciate until you get to your cap. The NAV won't depreciate um, that much in a structured protection or 100% protected product. Uh, what you might see is if the market's down 5%, 10%, you might see that NAV go down 1%, maybe 2%. And so if in that scenario, if the NAV is down 1%, then your cap would go from 981 to 10.81. And you know that that uh, minus one of your NAV is going to appreciate at a minimum, appreciate back to zero. So you're collecting almost a free one percent there is how I think of it. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. So, as far as like an investor expectation, if they own this product, getting back to the NAV, um, say the market runs up and you hit that cap, will the NAV just kind of stay stable at that cap and and won't really fluctuate much? Um, yeah, a couple points there. As long as the market is a, is well above the cap, you'll start creeping up close to that cap, but you won't scrape the last penny of that cap until the last day of the outcome period. Got it. So there's you know 12 months of time value built into these options. And so uh, like 2023 was a, a, a positive example for this type of strategy where the market you know ran up pretty significantly. And so the NAV just you know pretty pretty steadily charged up from you know, it's called one hundred dollars to about nine and a half percent would have been your cap over twenty twenty three, and it's just a steady march forward and up toward that cap. Uh, but you wouldn't collect the the final you know penny of that until the last day of the outcome period. But you Got get it. close. Yeah, no, that makes a ton of sense. So you've already explained to me how you could use this as a you know a cash alternative. What are your thoughts on? using it maybe in the fixed income space as well as an alternative. We saw what happened in 2022 where, you know, a 60, 40 investor in their quote unquote safe bucket, um, you know, got hurt a lot. Mm -hmm. Could you see this also supplementing there as well, or you feel more just kind of like a, I think so. Yeah. I think, but I think when there was, uh, yeah, I may kick myself here, but I think when there was more risk call it, built into the fixed income markets, then something like this made made a lot of sense because we were at the forefront of that significant rate hike that ultimately you know occurred. Um, so if you think that rates are going to continue to go up, then I think something like this is a great idea because putting your money and linking it to the equity market now with no greater downside risk or 100% protection um, has a lot of implications, especially as it relates to what you might be trying to obtain from from bonds. You know, now you can link that to the equity market growth. Um, now that rates are higher, I think we have opportunities to generate risk management and income from bonds again. And so, to the extent there's rate declines, I think the, that those you know, bonds may perform well. So we have uh, some other ETFs that are, are focused on that type of approach as well. Can Q is one one of those ETFs that we launched a couple months ago. Um, one thing that we've seen advisors uh, use these protection products for is just de-risking equity exposure. Um, so one exercise we'll go through is, you know, Brad, how much equity, you know, market risk do you want to take off the table? You've run run the equity markets up. We're at you know near all time highs. I ha- so how much equity risk do you want to take off the table today? So no, you can me? yeah you can answer the question. Yeah, this is yeah, a, this me. is a question. Okay. So just pick let's up percentage. Say, let's call it ten uh, percent of ten percent of my overall. Okay, so if you portfolio. take ten percent of your equity exposure and move it into a uh, protected product like this, then you've basically taken ten percent of your risk off the table. But that zero to nine point eight percent upside doesn't get changed. Like you still capture all of that, right. and so you basically get you know, you'll have ninety percent downside exposure in that instance you'll have all of the zero to 9.8%. And then beyond that, you're not really capped out at the portfolio level. You're, you're capturing you know, 90% of that upside. And so, you know, or if you want to take half your risk off the table, now you can customize your exposure and create something that gives you 
you know, 50% downside risk, but then you're capturing 50% of the upside beyond that cap. And so we've seen people use, use kind of those, uh, if you view it as a payoff pro profile, use those handles to kind of toggle your, your equity exposure. Um, so I think that's a very interesting way that people are starting to use these products. But then again, once you put, you know, 100% protection on something or even 98% protection, it really unlocks that cash bucket. Uh, and there's, you know, $9 trillion in CDs and money markets today. It's larger than the ETF space itself. It's a massive, massive complex. And so the giving somebody the liquid, transparent ability and tax efficient ability to link their cash to the equity markets in a single trade, I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, no, I would agree. And I was going to ask where you thought this would go in an overall portfolio. I think we we answered that. My question would be, and I haven't thought about this deep enough, and you you have been in this space for a very long time. Do, do you see a way to kind of combine this structured outcome, uh, like 0% downside capture with buffers to maybe create really defined parameters of expectations for an investor, maybe building portfolios, um, encompassing both and, and really setting defined outcomes on both sides? Yeah, I think we're at the early days of this space. Um, if you look globally, a lot of families invest their money in a structured way. And they do it because a lot of them go through their banks in order to gain access to you know, these types of market exposures. And that makes sense because banks you know, build structured products. There's, you know, call it 20, 30,000 structured products around the world. Um, in the US, it really wasn't that way. And I think it's because you know, families use the financial advisor, the RAA, in order to invest their money. And so the buffer ETFs, the there's income based, you know, outcome ETFs, and now there's capital protected based ETFs. And so all of those are giving financial advisors and the RAAs just really great new tools that allow them to deliver you know, these types of certainties to their uh, clients. So I think that we're at the beginning of this. Um, you know, you view that, look at the target outcome kind of brand or structured ETF brand as an umbrella. And then underneath, similar in the, you know, in the other structured note space underneath, you've got growth products, you've got income-based products, you've got capital protection type products. And so this capital protection category is the one that uh, we have seen really not uh, built yet. And it's something that we want to capture. So I think there's a lot of ways to build portfolios using these. Yeah, no, I would agree. Uh, you, you'd mentioned off the top, this is going to be one of 12. I don't know if you're able to talk about kind of the timeline or what's next. Uh, you know, are you able to kind of disclose um, the next lineup of products that are going to be hitting the market? Yeah, happy to. So uh, we have the NASDAQ 100 coming in June. So June 3rd is the first business day in June. Um, S&P 500 version launched today. So again, NASDAQ in June. And then we're on file for a Russell 2000 version in July. Um, you know, From our analysis, we see the, the cap actually stepping up a little bit for those two other um, two other reference assets. And so there, we think there's going to be good opportunity in, in both of those. And from my perspective, it kind of changes your mindset when you have no downside risk. It's like, okay, if I'm if I normally would think of like my access points to NASDAQ or Russell, it's like, what kind of risk reward am I taking? But if there's truly no downside risk over a set period, then like it just it it changes your mindset a little bit. It's like, okay, well, what index do I actually want exposure to? Um, and in that sense, like, well, which one do I think might grow well uh, over right. the next twelve months? And so I think uh, one of the reasons that we were looking at Russell 2000 is I think that it's it's set up to do well, um, you know, over over the next uh, couple of years here. And so th those are the three reference assets we're bringing. And then we're going to repeat that cycle four times. So right. after the Russell uh, planned Russell in July, we'll go back to S and P in August and the Nasdaq and, until we have twelve of these in the market. And we didn't really want to we didn't want to saturate the market with thirty six of these. I mean, granted, if right. they're extremely popular and advisors want them, then we'll bring them. But uh, we just wanted to have one ETF available every month that people could get into and get uh, you know 100% protection on. Yeah, that, it makes a ton of sense. And, and I've looked at some of the other like buffered series where they have ends up being like 300 products in the ETF lineup because they're trying it to get every month of every different. Sure, yeah. Sure. And it's, I, so the more volatile the asset class, I would 
I would assume the higher the cap, and I'm asking what is probably a, a silly question, um, but do you ever foresee maybe doing this in the Bitcoin space? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'd say there's there's a whole host of opportunities to put you know capital protection on. Um, so we've explored a lot of different asset classes. Um, you know, there's some idiosyncrasies to doing that. There's some um, ETFs out there today, like the futures based one. Um, there's currently no options market on on Bitcoin ETFs, and so that obviously is a there needs to be liquid options markets. Um, so yeah, it's all uh, those are all you know things that we're exploring, but I wouldn't wouldn't say for certain on any of that. Sure. No, I, I had to ask the question, but anyways, well, I know Matt, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I really, you know, I really appreciate your time. Before I let you go, where can people learn more about Calamos and get information on CPSM? You know, this this issue that's out today, as well as the rest of the ETFs that are coming. Yeah, so you can go to our website, calamos.com. I go to our ETF tab, and all the information is right there. The pricing tool is right there. You can, you know, buy in on day one, like today. Uh, I'm sure by the time this posts, we'll be past day one, and we'll be ready to, you know, go with the the June Nasdaq series on June third. Uh, but the website's going to have all that information. All right. Well, again, Matt, thanks so much. This was really awesome. I appreciate you spending some time with me. Thanks, Brad. 